Join us now for a moment of faith with Dr. Joe Arthur, pastor of the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesboro, Georgia. This is an internet broadcast that will air daily at 12.30 p.m. and will remain on our Harvest Facebook page for you to view at any time. This broadcast is to uplift God's children and to remind us all that faith is a victory that overcometh the world. Now here's our pastor with a moment of faith, Dr. Joe Arthur. And greetings today to all of our watching and listening friends. This is Brother Joe Arthur, and I welcome you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to another moment of faith, looking, expecting, seeing what God is able to do in your life and mine when we put our faith in His Word. Well, it's a blessing today to have one of my young buddies with me today, Brother Austin Burrell. How are you, Brother Austin? Doing fine, sir. How are you? Oh, I appreciate you stopping by today and visiting with us. And uh, I love Brother Austin here. Let me tell you why. His grandfather was Dr. Walter Burrell from Cornelia, Georgia. Brother Walter was a pastor slash evangelist, you know, for 50-some years. And he was great friends with my hero, Billy Kelly, yes. and uh, they were two peas in a pod. Oh, now, absolutely. Now, son, when they got together, it was on. Oh, yeah. It, it, now, it wasn't always spiritual, Austin. <laughs> it wasn't always spiritual, but it was good. Oh, yeah. And Walter Burrell was a man of God, Austin. Yes, he was. He was a man yes. of God. Uh, one of the things in your grandfather's life that stands out is uh, he played in the movie Sheffy. Uh, and in the 70s, Bob Jones University produced a movie about Sheffy, Robert Sheffy, the mountain circuit riding preacher during the Civil War from Southwest Virginia, where I'm from, really. I've, I've been to his church. I've been to his grave. I've been to the Wabash Camp meeting ground. But uh, they did a movie about a book called The Saint in the Wilderness. Saint in the Wilderness, that was the name of the book. And Bob Jones did a movie about it. And your grandfather was the preacher. Really? He, he, he prayed the part of the preacher in the camp meeting scene. Uh, if you've ever seen that movie, Sheffy, uh, your grandpa stands up and says, as, as, you know, and you know how he would tremble. You know? yes. He said, yes. as Moses lifted up the serpent in yep. the wilderness, <laughs> even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Yep. And he preached in that scene. Now, your grandfather was the, uh, the preacher. Now, my hero, Brother Ben Kelly. Was the moonshiner. Yeah. <laughs> he was the moonshiner. I, I asked Brother Billy one time, I said, why did they get you to play that part? He said, they wanted somebody with experience, boy. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you how Billy got that part. George Rogier was in charge of the sound uh, at Bob Jones at that time. Mm -hmm. And him and Billy were just good friends. And one day the director said, uh, I need some livestock. I need some cows. I need some horses, mules. I need some donkeys. I need some uh, oxen. Mm -hmm. And he said, I know where to go. I know where to go. There's a preacher up here at Glassy Mountain, right at the foot of the mountain, Highway 101, right outside of Greer, mm -hmm. uh, right there at the foot of the Blue Ridge. And he said, well, go up there. He's got all kinds of things. Well, Brother Billy had come in late that night before from revival, and it just so happened. By the time, and th th this, this is hilarious, by the time they started up that driveway, Billy come out of his house in his overalls, mm -hmm. T-shirt, yep. boots, and that straw hat going to feed. And that lady director said to George, said, who's that? He said, that's preacher Billy Kelly. She said, that's my bootlegger. He said, do what? <laughs> that's my bootlegger. And she said, Brother Billy, will you play a bootlegger? He said, well, I've never done any acting. He said, well, I'll try. Yeah. And I'm telling you, Brother Billy, done a superb job with that. But that was just one of the times. Him and your grandfather, Austin, uh, <laughs> had a relationship that, Went back 20 years before Sheffy. Uh, they had a mutual friend named Bill Reese. Yes. 
And uh, you got them three together. Oh. oh, my goodness. And, folks, I don't know if you can still get it or not, but myself, your grandfather, Bill Reese, and Billy, one year before Brother Billy died, um, we made a little video on the life and times of Billy Kelly. Yep. And segment number two is laughing with Billy Kelly. Have you seen it, Austin? I have, and that was actually the very first time I ever heard of you was the person they said right in the background wearing the green shirt and the overalls. They said, that's Brother Joe Lothar, and that was the first time I ever saw you. And I was thinking, my word of mercy, he is a lot younger looking. Than I was your size. <laughs> <laughs> I was your size and had a head full of hair. And uh, but we sat there in front of a fireplace. They they did mainly. I just helped a little bit. And uh, but your grandfather. Let me tell you what Billy Kelly said about your granddaddy son. Uh, Billy Kelly said, "Walter Burrell is the kind of preacher can preach anywhere. He yes. can preach yes. anywhere. Mm -hmm. He can preach at the Greer Camp meeting. He can preach at a little church in the mountains. Mm -hmm. He can preach at the First Baptist on the City Square, yes. or he can preach at Bob Jones University in the thousands." And that's just the way he lived his life, and it didn't matter whether he was preaching or just fellowshipping with anybody. It could be your old country folks wearing overalls in the middle of a farm. He could socialize with them, and then if he had dinner with the president of the University of Bob Jones, he could just sit there and socialize. He could just interact with whoever was in front of him. That's just a rare gift. It is a life. very rare yes. gift, a very rare gift because... A lot of preachers, in, including this one, sometimes you get me out of my natural or my comfort zone, should I say, element. And sometimes I struggle. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, and Billy Kelly was that way. Billy Kelly was that he talked about Walter Burrow being that way. Billy Kelly was a lot that way. Mm -hmm. uh, he could preach at the Greer Camp meeting. He could preach at Tabernacle. He could preach for that uh, preacher on the East Coast over there, uh, uh, Brother Rodney Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he could just preach anywhere. And I'll tell you why, Austin. Those men had God on them. Yes. They had God on them, yep. son. They, they were anointed of God mm -hmm. and blessed of God. They have the power of God upon their life. And, yep. and the reason why I want to interview, to interview you today, Austin comes down and spends Sunday with us a lot. Yep. And uh, I wanted our listeners to, to know and see. Here's a young man. How old are you, Austin? 23. 23 years old, that's not ashamed no. of his family. No, I am not. They're, they're not ashamed. He's not ashamed of his heritage. He's not ashamed of his grandfather. No. And, and, and right, you got your daddy, and you got and he's got a brother, right? Yes, he's got two brothers. And both of, one of them preach. I know one of them preaches, don't they? It's just him, sadly. Your daddy's the one that preaches. That's the preacher. And one's an airline pilot, right? Uh, that's the baby. That's and, the youngest. Yeah, and the other one's a bootlegger, right? Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> no, no, what's he do? <laughs> he works at Wrigley's. All right. Yeah. The gum keep the... He's the gum chewer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, But his family goes to church. All of Walter's kids go to church. Your grandmother's still living. She's still living. How old is your grandmother? She, I believe, is 82. She's still pretty, though. She that's comes right. to the Greer Cap meeting every year. And uh, But he's not ashamed of his heritage, nope. not ashamed of the way he was raised, uh, not ashamed of the old-time religion. Mm -hmm. In fact, right before we went on the air, you was telling me about the day your daddy led you to Christ. Yes. And uh, just tell me about that little bit about going to see your grandpa and how happy he was, he man. He was just ecstatic because whenever we pulled up into their driveway, he was out in the backyard just mowing grass. It was a late summer night. And whenever I come out there, my father, he waved him down, and he got off the lawnmower, come walking up, and he asked, you know, what, what are you interrupting me for? And Dad said, uh, Austin wanted to tell you something. I told Papa, I said, I got saved, Papa. I got saved, and you talk about the biggest bear hug you ever would receive. He, he was just so happy and saying, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. Oh. It's a memory I will always remember. Oh, I know you will, son. Yes. Uh, not just being saved. But been able to share that with your grandfather, who was a mighty man of God. Mm -hmm. The last time me and your grandfather got together, I was preaching in in the Greensboro, North Carolina area. He was preaching at Charity Baptist for Roland Shepley, mm -hmm. dear friend of mine, and uh, we met at the Cracker Barrel. 
In fact, I know who I was with. I was with Mark Agan in Community Baptist Church over that Siler City. And Mark and myself, Jimmy Dillon, who's with the Lord now from the uh, Shining Light Baptist Church in Greensboro, Brother Roland and your grandfather. I think maybe Tyler Golden might have been there. Several preachers were there. And we laughed. We oh, ate. Yeah. We laughed. <laughs> ate fellowship. Cried. And uh, got outside. Had my picture made with him and Jimmy Dillon. Little did I know that'd be the last place on this side of the river, yeah. you know, that we would we would meet. Yeah. But I appreciate you joining me today. It was an honor. And uh, thank you so much. Austin, we thank God for you. And thank you for not being ashamed of old-time religion, son. And I just want our listeners to know, praise God every once in a while, somebody will hear it. Yes. It'll get a hold of somebody. Mm -hmm. They'll stay with it, and it'll stay with them. Yes. And they'll be a champion of the old-time way. God is good today, people. And listen, that person that influenced your life, that person that won you to Christ, that one voice, one voice, that yes. one voice, Amen. that's been our theme, that one voice that pointed you in the right direction. Thank God for the people that invested in your life. Austin, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. And thank folks, you. we love you, and we'll see you again tomorrow. I'm excited about what God's going to do in a moment of faith.